Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the com video. With all of the excitement of graphics cards, it's very easy to overlook some of the CPU news which is doing the rounds recently. We're going to start things out with Intel, more specifically the Bastion Falls, um, and the platform overview of a couple of different processors, and then we're going to move to AMD, which is a bit different to how we normally do things on the channel. Normally we do things alphabetically, but the AMD news is a little more tentative, to say the least. So we're going to start out with more um, solid information. So, as you're probably aware, Intel are busy little bees at the moment with CPUs. With the third quarter of 2016, we're going to see the KB Lake mainstream family launching. And then in the fourth quarter, we're going to see KB Lake S, which is the overclockable versions of um, the KB Lake lineup. Which means, of course, you're going to get the replacements for the 6700Ks and so on and so forth. But Intel are not finished there. In 2017, we're going to see the introduction of Bassin Falls which is actually a rather nice change for Intel. Essentially, this platform is going to support both Skylake X and KB Lake X high-end i7 processors. Now, of course, this is a totally new socket, and I say of course because that's pretty standard for Intel and most companies, to be fair. It's LGA 2066. 2066, to clarify, refers to the number of CPU pins which means, once again, the older processors and the older motherboards are not going to be compatible with the next generation stuff. But, with the Skylake X family, we're going to be seeing 6, 8, and 10 core SKUs, and these are going to rocket up to 140 watts TDP. Now, they're also going to be launching KB Lake X. Now, this is going to be more mainstream. It's going to come with the traditional, you can repeat it with me, four cores and most likely hyper-threading, or traditional four cores only with hyper-threading disabled for the i5 models. For the power user, the Skylake X is absolutely ridiculous, having up to 44 lanes. This means that discrete, discrete excuse me, graphic configurations could be absolutely gargantuan. But even the traditional uh, KB Lake X is going to have 16 PCIe Gen 3.0 lanes. Now what's really interesting is they still are 14 NM, but are going to have, once again, a maximum wattage of 144, with, uh, sorry, 140, which is quite ludicrous, with up to 13.75 megabytes of CPU LL cache. We're not sure about the clock speed yet, but most likely it's going to be fairly comparable to the high-end current generation quad-core models, which is probably going to somewhat um, redeem Intel. There's been a couple of reports that even at NVIDIA themselves, and this actually goes back to our uh, discussion of the Pascal Titans, now you might recall in that video that I said that there's a running joke at NVIDIA when they're talking amongst themselves that you don't want to get a super high core processor model from Intel. Instead, you want to go for the 6700K because otherwise you're going to bottleneck the new Titan, which is rumored to be about 50% faster than the 1080 um, in terms of single core performance. But Intel theoretically may try to, to change this criticism, particularly with the Zen processors, which we'll talk about in a moment, coming out from AMD. Now, finally, and this is more memory concern, with Skylake X, we're going to see quad-core memory supported, but KB Lake X is going to have just dual channel, which is fine, obviously, the fewer cores you have, the less memory bandwidth is required to power those cores anyway. It's still pretty damn impressive, and um, if this information from BenchLife is accurate, it represents a fairly nice improvement over the current generation of processors. Now, talking about Zen, let's talk about a super rumor. And by super rumor, I mean it's a post on a forum. Uh, this originates from Anantec. Now, I will point out once again that this is a truckload of salt here because anyone can report these rumours and whether it's true or not, it's down to you to decide. But supposedly someone's reporting that they have information on the Zen engineering stage. So Zen ES is currently at revision A0 and supposedly there is L2, L3 variants which is 2 slash 8 megabytes, 4 plus 16 megabytes, 8 or slash 32 megabytes, 
1264 and 16 64, which is pretty well reported to be 50, 512 kilobytes of level 2 cache per core or 8 megabytes per 4 core. That's fine. Now, what is interesting is the core count 4, 8, 16, and 32. But the really interesting thing is that the thread count, of course, is double the core count, which is fine. We know, of course, it's got simultaneous multi-threading. Think Intel hyper-threading. One of the early reports is that Zen is not going to be launching at fewer than eight cores at launch. Um, and Intel, um, of course, at the moment, are very focused on the mainstream at just four cores. So theoretically, it might give AMD a bit of a, a bit of a head start for gamers who also do other things so for example gamers who do a lot of video editing or gamers who do a lot of programming or development work or 3d modeling that type of thing remember a lot of gamers who have a high-end system also need to do other tasks so single performance single core performance is not necessarily the only game in town they also need a lot of multi-threading performance as well now amd supposedly will release a six core variant but what I'm going to assume is that this is going to be based upon worst case scenarios. So when they build a good back catalogue of processors that have had, let's say, a core or two that doesn't work, they can disable those. I actually reported this rumour a while back, so that at least has had a couple of sources behind it. So most of that information is not well established, but there have been multiple reports on it. However, there are four variants of the ES Zen. The AM4 8 core, the AM4 4 core, the SP24 and the SP32. Now obviously the latters, the latter two, are more aimed at server markets. Um, but supposedly the 8 core 95 watt it has a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz, an all cores boost um, to 3.05 and the maximum is 3.2. However, these reports do indicate that the final versions of the processors may go a little bit faster, maybe up to 3.5 GHz base for the 4-core variant. Now, I'm going to read this out verbatim. What AMD is doing different in case of Zen is the purpose of the CPU. AMD doesn't build it for the future, but for the present. Maybe it won't be strong in AVX and FMA, but an average user won't realise it because the average user won't use the AVX and FMA capabilities, which is fairly true to be fair. Average Joe will see that Zen is as fast as Haswell on Intel's side if AMD won't screw it up, and it's enough for everything that the average Joe wants to do on their PC, end quote. Now, what is established about Zen, and we've seen this several times over, is that Zen is touted to be a 40% improvement IPC over the previous generation of processors and there have been some other reports as well that the processor is going to have major improvements in performance now comparing Summit or Zen if you prefer to Orochi slash Excavator you can see massive improvements in performance compared to the old generation What's my take on this? Well, Zen is, once again, supposedly, going to be launched by the fourth quarter of this year. Now, the reason I say supposedly is obviously there can be delays, and AMD haven't gone on record and say it's going to be released, let's say, November the 15th or anything like that, unfortunately. But my take on it is it's rather interesting from the perspective of users. There are certainly going to be some individuals who Zen is not for. If they need lots and lots and lots of single thread performance, Zen may not be the processor for you. If you need a lot of AVX performance, once again, according to these rumors, Zen probably isn't the processor for you. But if you're an average gamer or you're someone who just does standard media, maybe music production or whatever, and you just need a processor that's got a lot of threads, a lot of horsepower for the average use that the average user is going to use, then Zen is going to be very tasty if it's priced right, if it doesn't have very high heat outputs, and especially, I imagine, if it overclocks fairly well, power users are going to be very interested in it. One of the benefits, of course, of the 6700K or some of the other processors out there is that they've overclocked really well. And so you've got 
folks who are quite happy to push those processors to near the breaking point and even though that those CPUs have smaller number of cores gamers are very happy with them and there has been a lot of debate whether like let's say the 5820k or the 6700k or even the 6600k is the better solution with DirectX 12 with Vulkan and all of these other applications now starting to become more multi-threaded especially with the ridiculously powerful um, GPU solutions that we're going to start seeing over the next 12 months-ish. Who knows what the hell, for example, um, the next generation of graphics cards is going to bring, let alone the Titan Pascal, which is, once again, supposedly going to be out in three or four months, if the rumours are accurate. So that's my take on it. My take on it is it's going to be really cool. Should you wait? Should you wait to upgrade? Well, it depends what you're coming from. At the end of the day, if you've got a fairly good processor right now, and you're in no rush, let's say, what once again, you've got a 4670, you've got a 47, 4770K, you've got, you know, a pretty good processor where you're not that fussed about upgrading right now, right this second, then I'd wait. See whether Intel or AMD float your boat. On the other hand, if you've got a really bad processor, or, you know, your main rig's just blown up, then there's certainly nothing wrong with going out and uh, picking up a 6700K. Now that the price gouging for those damn processors went down, it's kind of funny because we reviewed the 6700K platform and I looked like an idiot because I actually said the price and then literally a couple of days after the video went up, the price soared by like £50 or something just for the processor. It might have even been over that, I don't remember. I was like, well... That kind of makes things a little bit more difficult, and that's why I was a bit harder on the process after the review, because I was like, I don't necessarily know if the platform uh, additions, like, you know, M2 and so on, for the average user are worth the extra price premium coming from a 4770K or something fairly well established. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.